In this video of ASP.NET, we will discuss a very important concept that is AJAX. Basically, AJAX stands for Asynchronous JavaScript and XML. As the name says, here in AJAX, we are going to perform some asynchronous activities. As so far, whenever we add some controls over a web page and whenever we submit a particular page, the whole page data got submitted on the server side. But if during a particular process, if few of the controls are participating on the operation, for example, there is a drop down list which is containing some list of the countries and right after that, I have a small text box which will take the country code for the mobile number means the ISD code for specific countries. So what I want as soon as I will change the country, that particular text box should get the country code for the ISD. So here only the two controls that is the drop down list and the text box are in action. But if I will do this particular thing in the default scenario as we were going on, the whole page will be posted due to which the performance of a web page will get downgraded. So here by working with Ajax, we will be, we will be able to make our page to for the partial posting. That partial posting means we will create a particular area using the controls like update panel inside which we will place few controls and only those controls which are there in the update panel will be posted for a particular operation rather than the complete page. So here in ASP.NET we do have some AJAX extension controls out there but AJAX is an independent technology from ASP.NET. You can implement the AJAX code in any of the particular technology and here in ASP.NET we can also perform the AJAX operations. So let's have a practical implementation and see how can we start working with the AJAX controls out here. So for implementing the AJAX controls I'll come to toolbox and here I'll find the section called AJAX extension. Here I'll have to start with script manager control which will be managing the asynchronous activities of the AJAX controls. So let's take a very basic example where I'll take a timer and we'll try to tick it on every second to show the updated time. Now here I'll take the timer control and to display the time I'll take the label control from the standard control. Let's remove the default text of this label and now I'll come to the design and we'll double click on the timer. It will generate this timer1 underscore tick method and inside this I'll say label1 dot text is equal to date time dot now dot too long time string to get the time on the label and I'll do the same thing on the page load so that I will get the time on the very starting. And before executing, let's come to the interval property where it is 60,000 millisecond means one second. I'll set it to 1,000 milliseconds means this tick event will go for every second. Now when I'll execute this, you can see the page is getting refreshed on every second. Alright, and if there is any other control over this particular page, it will be very uneasy for a user to work on that particular form. So what I'll have to do, I'll have to go for the partial posting which we were discussing earlier and for doing that, I'll again come to source first and inside this, I'll put the update panel. Now inside this update panel, I'll put the content template inside which I can put the controls. So I'll just cut both of these controls and we'll put it inside the content template. So basically this update panel will create a partial segment of a particular page which will be posted on a particular request but the remaining page will not be interrupted. So let's execute this page again to check the difference in the output and now you can see the time is changing still but the page is not getting reloaded every second. So if you have some other controls over the page you can just continue doing with that. Now out here we can see like there is one more control which is update progress. It is used for showing the 
progress if there is some longer process going on. So for doing that, I'll just remove this timer control and we'll add a button. And here I'll take a button with the text start process. And now when I'll click it, I'll say, I'll, first of all, I'll have to include system.threading. Okay, I'll, I'll continue here only. So system dot threading dot thread dot sleep and I'll sleep it for 3000 milliseconds and after that process maybe it's a, some process going on and after that I'll say label one dot text is equal to process done alright now to show that particular process on the Ajax I'll come to source again and after the update panel, I'll put this update progress. And inside this, I'll put a progress template. And inside this, I can put anything which shows the progress. So here, what I'll do, I'll take the image, there's a loading image, which I'll show here. So as soon as the button will be clicked, it will be shown. So let's execute this. And let's click on start process. So you see this image is running out there. If you want to show this particular image inside that only you can put the update progress out there as well. Since I have put the update progress after the update panel, that's why it is coming after that. So this is how you can start working with these basic controls and for a good practice you can start working with some third party controls of Ajax to make your ASP.NET application more effective.